you guys have been asking me what's the maximum overclock you can overclock your Ryzen Threadripper processor to. And after doing some research, I've got a bunch of numbers that you guys can probably make pretty good sense out of. So first of all, let me explain this. Um, number one, as you guys know, there is the base clock, there is the um, extended boost, and there's the extreme frequency range, and then there's actually overclocking it. So depending on, this all depends on your cooler, so please don't go out with a standard um, Hyper 2 um, 10 EVO and you know 212 EVO and just go try overclocking because that's not going to work you need a liquid cooler if you're going to get anything of these numbers but this is the maximum you should be able to and also keep in mind though that the um, silicon in your processor may be different so you might get slightly less results or you might get slightly better results it all depends but I've got a bunch of average numbers for you so first of all I'm going to start off with what the current record is for the Ryzen Threadripper processor and for this we're uh, referring to the Mac, the highest tier one I forgot the name I think it's 19 50x I think it is the maximum they've overclocked it to been able to physically overclock it to with liquid nitrogen is 5.2 gigahertz which don't get me wrong that is some crazy overclocking skills especially you know starting at a 3.4 gigahertz frequency that's pretty good so don't get me wrong that's a very nice overclocking you know temperature of course the thing is you're not going to be able to get that unless you have liquid nitrogen and there's really no point so let's take a moment to check out what the actual you know what you can probably overclock it to without any issue. So I'm going to cut it straight to the point and you're probably going to maximum with a liquid cooler, with a good liquid cooler, you're probably going to get 4.5 gigahertz flat. That's what you're looking at. Um, the Depending on the cooler you have, you might even be able, um, you, you know, 3.4 gigahertz is the base starting frequency. So if you were to go through and get a pretty decent cooler, but you weren't planning on overclocking, you'd probably still get the extended boost up to 4 gigahertz, which is, don't get me wrong, is very nice. Um, the other thing is, uh, the extreme frequency range gets it up to 4.2, so if you really got something okay, you weren't planning on overclocking, you could still get 4.2 gigahertz, no issue. But when you start overclocking it, you're probably going to get to 4.5, because the maximum is around 5.2, uh, and that's just overclock, that's like really pushing it, and I wouldn't recommend it, because that wouldn't keep your processor for a while, especially when you're paying like $1,000 for these processors. Don't get me wrong, they're very cool and all, but still. Um, but the maximum known, you know, possibility is 5.2, in which you're probably going to be able to get it home stably without having to worry about, you know, I don't know, things crashing or heating up too much. Just, uh, just call it safe at five, uh, 4.5. I mean, if you really want to push it, you could probably get 4.6. But you know, after that, you're just going to need to get liquid nitrogen if you're going to try it because it's just extreme, you know, amounts of heat that it's giving off. But um. I hope this video was somewhat beneficial to you guys in explaining, you know, what the um, actual temperature um, should be. Uh, I'll also include some information in the description on that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. And if it wasn't, then comment down below why, I guess. I like to hear feedback. Feedback's actually pretty nice. Um, but yeah, so thank y'all. See you guys next time.